As people know, Canada has been a world leader on vaccinations. Uh, and that's just uh, part of what Canadians were able to do through this pandemic, where we saw everyone from frontline health workers uh, to community workers to individual Canadians stepping up during this pandemic to be there for each other, uh, to do the right things to get us through this. And it has culminated, of course, in vaccinations, uh, as Canada is now uh, among the world leaders in vaccination rates uh, amongst eligible Canadians, that is, you know, 12 and older. Um, the government also, uh, all the orders of government have been there uh, to support Canadians, particularly on the federal side where uh, we scrambled to deliver PPE, we've scrambled to ensure that we have vaccines for everyone, uh, and we're also ensuring booster shots uh, for the coming years as they become necessary, listening to the uh, expert advice that uh, folks in, uh, uh, in NACI and other uh, uh, fields are going to be making uh, on how we move forward. But when we talk about the high vaccination rates of Canadians, uh, you know, 82, 85, 87 percent in various jurisdictions of Canadians fully vaccinated, it's always eligible Canadians. Because we know, particularly those of us who are parents, uh, like I am, of uh, kids under 12, that not everyone can get vaccinated yet. We have heard uh, that Pfizer uh, has now submitted uh, for regulatory approval at Health Canada, a pediatric vaccine for kids 5 to 11. And this is great news. I can assure you that Health Canada is uh, going to be examining attentively uh, that submission. And even though I know parents uh, are all going to be eager to get their kids vaccinated as quickly and as soon as possible. I want people to be patient because Health Canada is going to be taking the time necessary to ensure that like all vaccines approved for use in Canada, vaccines approved for kids 5 to 11 will be fully safe and effective. It is extremely important that they go through all the full processes necessary so that every parent can have confidence when these vaccines do get approved that they will be safe for their children to keep us all safe to keep them safe to keep our communities and schools safe as we move forward and therefore what i'm very pleased to be announcing today is that we have worked directly with pfizer and shortly after the time comes for Health Canada to approve those vaccines for pediatric use. We will uh, receive millions of doses in Canada, enough to get uh, all kids under uh, between 5 and 11 vaccinated as quickly as possible. We will have the supply necessary to support every kid across the country from 5 to 11 with vaccinations as soon as possible after Health Canada approved it. C'est une bonne nouvelle aujourd'hui. Santé Canada, comme vous savez, est en train d'analyser les données et faire les processus rigoureux pour l'approbation euh, de la, de la, du vaccin Pfizer pour les 5 à 11 ans. Et ils vont prendre le temps nécessaire pour s'assurer qu'il soit sécuritaire et efficace. Parce que tous les parents euh, veulent que leurs enfants soient en sécurité, mais ils ne veulent pas prendre de risques non plus. Alors, vous pouvez savoir que si et quand Santé Canada va approuver l'utilisation euh, de de, du vaccin Pfizer pour les enfants, ça va être sécuritaire de le faire pour vos enfants. En même temps, je peux annoncer aujourd'hui qu'on a euh, signé des ententes avec Pfizer pour que Dès que ce soit approuvé pour utilisation au Canada, très peu après, nous allons recevoir assez de doses au Canada pour assurer la vaccination de tous les enfants au Canada de 5 à 11 ans. C'est une très bonne nouvelle pour tous les parents et tous les enfants à travers le pays parce que ça fait longtemps euh, qu'on veut s'assurer que nos enfants aient la protection additionnelle que la vaccination euh, leur donnera comme plus que 80 des adultes au Canada ont déjà fait. 
il y a quelques semaines, euh, on a fait plusieurs promesses par rapport à nos priorités, euh, par rapport à la vaccination, euh, par rapport à la lutte contre la COVID. Euh, on a livré sur notre euh, promesse d'assurer un mandat de vaccination obligatoire pour les trains et les avions, un mandat de vaccination obligatoire pour les travailleurs de la fonction publique. Et aujourd'hui, je suis content de pouvoir confirmer un troisième élément de cette promesse, c'est-à-dire euh, la certification ou la preuve de vaccination uniforme pour les déplacements à l'international qui sera disponible à travers le pays. Uh, we made a commitment to ensure that there is a national standard for a proof of vaccination certificate uh, that will be issued by every province and territory so that people can travel domestically but particularly internationally. And today I'm happy to confirm that all provinces and territories have confirmed uh, that they will be moving forward with a standardized national proof of vaccination. Uh, as of today, so far we have Saskatchewan, Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and all three provinces, uh, all three territories, Nunavut, uh, Northwest Territories, and Yukon, who already have put into use uh, the national standard for proof of vaccination. Uh, you can download it onto your phone, uh, you can print it out, uh, you can uh, ask for a copy by mail if uh, you don't have those capacities, but you are now able uh, to show proofs of vaccination immediately in all those provinces, and all other provinces have uh, agreed and are working hard to come online so that uh, as Canadians look to start traveling again, there will be a standardized proof of vaccination certificate that, as we said, uh, we will be uh, picking up the tab for at the federal level to ensure that all provinces uh, are able to do it. Uh, and we'll also move forward on our other commitments we made around vaccinations and safety uh, and COVID, which is uh, moving forward on legislation to keep uh, health care workers safe from intimidation and uh, uh, being hassled. So we can end this pandemic and get back to the things we love. It's a reminder as well, as we move forward on all these measures, for folks who still haven't yet gotten their full vaccinations, please get yourself vaccinated. It's the way we can all get back to the things we love, avoid further lockdowns, and make sure that our economy comes roaring back and we're keeping our most vulnerable as protected as possible. Uh, troisièmement, et je vais passer la parole uh, d'ici très peu à uh, Chrystia Freeland pour en parler plus longuement, mais par rapport à la relance et la reprise économique, uh, on a vu uh, des bonnes nouvelles. D'abord, le Canada a déjà repris 100 des emplois qu'on avait perdus depuis le début de la pandémie. On, on voit uh, beaucoup d'entreprises, beaucoup de croissance reprendre uh, à travers l'économie, mais on reconnaît qu'il y a encore uh, des secteurs qui sont durement touchés. On, on voit par exemple l'industrie du tourisme, uh, les restaurateurs, particulièrement dans les centres-villes, uh, qui ont encore uh, énormément de défis avec uh, les implications de la COVID-19. Et on a fait une promesse très directe aux Canadiens qu'on allait être là pour les appuyer aussi longtemps que nécessaire mais qu'on allait aussi être là pour assurer une relance économique forte et rapide. Et donc, je suis très, très content de pouvoir passer la parole maintenant à la ministre Freeland pour partager les éléments des prochaines étapes de notre plan pour lutter contre la COVID-19 et appuyer les Canadiens tout en facilitant une reprise économique rapide et forte.